Hi guys, it's Dr. Amy back and we're going to do another infection um, activity today. So first, this video is going to be about the chain of infection. My next posted video will be about a classroom activity and it will include free student handout. So if you're an instructor like I am, you will have something to give your students. But let's talk about the infection cycle. All right, so there are six parts to the infection cycle. And we usually start right at the top with number one, the infectious agent, which is basically any microorganism that is capable of creating a disease. So whether it's bacteria, fungus, parasites, prions, helminths, okay, all of the above. If you don't have something like that, you don't have an infection. Okay, but we all know they're out there. They're out there by the millions. They are everywhere. Okay, so what do we do about them? Well, I've drawn three arrows here. And those three arrows really represent the three things we can do to reduce the number of infectious agents. Um, the first is to sanitize, which is just your general good old cleaning, right? I mean, if you're clean, keep your counters clean, less microorganisms. Next is disinfection, and because I happen to teach for folks who will work in a medical office, uh, disinfection involves some sort of chemical disinfectant that is approved or a 10% bleach solution. Okay, so this is adding a chemical level to your cleaning. And then last but not least, we've got your good old sterilization, and sterilization, of course, is what we use um, when we talk about surgical infections, um, and this is eliminating 100% okay, of the bacteria, virus, fungus, those microorganisms, or as close to 100% as we can possibly get. But let's assume some of those microorganisms survive. Okay, they have to have somewhere to live. They really cannot live too long by themselves for a short period of time. All right, so the place that they live, we refer to as a reservoir. They could be in you, people, animals. Um, if you're in the office, again, the equipment, if you didn't clean it properly and you use it on another patient. Food, certainly there are foodborne illnesses. We hear about them all the time. Um, insects, and then of course, water supply. Now, some of these we control much more directly than others, right? Um, but some good ways we can reduce, again, the amount of infectious agents living in a reservoir is Hand washing, right? Hand washing, as we know, as healthcare providers, is the number one way to prevent the spread of infection. And then just good housekeeping, right? So again, if you use equipment on one patient, it needs to be clean before the next patient. Uh, table paper needs to be changed. Use a basic disinfectant, okay, between patients. Okay, but let's assume that again our microorganisms live. These reservoirs are allowing them to live, giving them energy with which to live. They have to exit that first person, okay, in order to infect a second person. And there's a lot of ways that they can exit, okay, uh, patient one, we'll call them. All right, so through blood, secretions, excretions, surface of the skin, wounds, okay, anything coming from the patient or coming out of the patient, could potentially contain a microorganism. So some good techniques we can use in order to prevent it exiting from patient one and then potentially infecting patient number two is to go through isolation, right? I mean, we'll talk about the different ways that things transmit, but if the patient is isolated by themselves in their own room, separate air supply, Okay, whatever microorganism is living on them has no opportunity to get to patient number two. Using sterile te techniques, using masks, using gloves, right, again, hand washing. Okay, the less we come in contact with things coming out of the patient, the less likely we are to get sick. Okay, but let's assume that there's been a breakdown in one of those. We're going to move on to level four, which happens to be how does it get from patient one to patient two? Okay, there's three big ways that this happens. And the first is by contact, whether it's direct, you know, you shake a patient's hand, you touch um, an open sore, an open wound that has microorganisms, 
or it's indirect, meaning they touch something in a room, they leave, you come in and touch that same object where the microorganism still resides, okay, you can pick up that object. But you have to directly touch that. So PPE such as gloves, right, gowns, okay, things that cover and protect your skin would help you and save you from contact type transmission. The next would be droplet transmission. And droplets refer to those little drops of water that come from your nose and mouth when you talk and cough and have mucus. Um, there is some difference in how far these things can travel, but about three feet seems to be the consensus when it comes to right how far these little droplets come into play. Now, certainly, because this is mostly coming from the face area, the mucus, right, the respiratory tract, one of the best types of PPE to put on is a mask when you've got somebody who has a droplet spread disorder. All right, and then last but not least, we've got our airborne spread, and these tend to be the trickiest of all because not only are they just out in the world and in the air, they're not carried on those physical droplets, they are physically just right, being carried through the air at much further distances. All right, so certainly here we would want to put masks on the patient, masks on yourself, um, and then, right, disinfection, hand washing, and better, right, asepsis techniques. All right, so hopefully we've stopped it cold there, but let's assume we haven't. Okay, so it has exited patient one. We are now headed into patient two, but those microorganisms can't get in just anywhere. They have to get in at certain locations, which we refer to as the portals of entry. And portals of entry really are, again, that face sort of area, okay? Mucous membranes, right? So the eyes, the nose, part of the mouth, respiration, digestion, which again starts in the mouth. The other big mechanism by which you leave yourself unprotected is through broken skin. Okay, when skin is intact, it will keep out most microorganisms. You simply shower, wash your hands before eating, and those microorganisms disappear. Okay, however, once the skin is open, we have now got direct entry, okay, into the body. So do think again your good old hand washing, your PPE, so gloves, gowns, mask. And if you know you have open wounds or the patient has open wounds, okay, those should be covered. All right, and last but not least, we are in contact with lots of microorganisms every day, and yet most of us are not sick on a continuous basis. Okay, we really do have to be what we call a susceptible host. Okay, meaning that our immune defenses are down, okay, um, and that we're able to really not fight off, okay, these microorganisms because the body really, really is pretty good at fighting off small numbers. At a time, it's when those defenses are down, okay, that we really seem to have a problem. So, of course, intact skin is a biggie. Um, getting your immunizations, of course, is a big help. Diet, good diet, right? Exercise, reducing stress. Um, being diabetic puts you at very high risk. Again, any damage to the skin, such as burns, surgery where the skin is open, okay, puts you at higher risk, okay? And then, of course, age, very young versus very old, certainly has less of an immune system than your average adult, okay, which would make you more susceptible. Okay, so now we've got a microorganism from patient one to patient two. And now we're back at the beginning, right? Patient two now has this infectious um, agent inside of them. And if they still don't go through their sanitization, disinfection, hand washing, housekeeping, they could potentially pass it on to patient three, four, so on and so forth. And so now you can really, really see, okay, what we are talking about when we say that, you know, washing, hand washing shows up in several locations here, right? PPE, so putting on a pair of gloves, taking them off properly, okay, certainly goes a long way, okay, to cutting down this cycle of infection. I hope that was helpful for you. Certainly you can ask any questions, okay, in the comments below. Please like.
okay the video. Please subscribe if you're interested in this sort of content. And if you have suggestions for any future videos, certainly let me know in the comments below. Okay, have a great day, guys.